Hello everyone, I'm Manuel. I'm going to be talking about our paper, Auditing Radicalization Pathways on YouTube. So I'll jump right to the point because eight minutes is very short. Unfortunately, in the last few years, we have seen the rise of fringe movements such as the alt-right, a white supremacist movement uh, that has large online presence. In this context, a hypothesis that emerged is that many individuals would be radicalized on YouTube. In 2018, Zainab wrote this opinion piece in the New York Times talking about how she perceived that YouTube, the YouTube algorithm was pushing users towards uh, more extreme content. And in 2019, Kevin Rose uh, told us the story about a young man who was radicalized in the platform. <coughs> Although these anecdotes are important to understand what's happening in the platform, they're not sufficient. Uh, fortunately, however, when users orbit these fringe communities, they leave traces such as likes, comments, and views. And analyzing these traces, we can try to figure out what's happening with user radicalization at scale. And this is exactly what we do. So uh, in the paper, we do this large-scale analysis of, of a large uh, YouTube data set, uh, trying to, to check whether this radicalization actually occurs and to which extent it occurs. So, we leverage a very large data set comprised of 349 channels, uh, more than 300,000 videos, and 72 million comments. The channels in our data set were broadly divided into four groups. So we have uh, the alt-right, which is the radical community we were studying. Uh, we have the alt-light and the intellectual dark web, which are communities on the internet that have been uh, associated uh, to the alt-right. They would be gateways to this more radical content according to the media and to NGOs. And we also collected uh, media channels ranging from The New Yorker to Russia Insider. Uh, these were used for comparison uh, for, for our analysis. Now that we, we leverage all this data, uh, I'll, I'll try to focus a bit on, on some of our key findings, and I'll talk about uh, the comments. So I'll talk about how we analyzed the trajectories of these users that comment in this data, and what insight can this bring about user radicalization on YouTube. So the first question that I'm going to try to answer with this data is, are the commenters the same? So what is the intersection between the different communities uh, in terms of their user base? So here, uh, we, we measure the jacquard similarity on the y-axis. So we get all the users in each of these communities, and we compare how similar they are to the users in other communities. Here we can see uh, the, the similarities between the alt-right and other, the other three communities, the intellectual dark web, the outlight, and the media. We can see that for all of these three communities, the similarities are growing. Yet, uh, this similarity is much higher for uh, the, the so-called gateway communities, the intellectual dark web, and the outlight. So while it's around 8% uh, for, for the outlight, for the outright and media, it's around, I don't know, 14% for the outright and the outlight. Uh, and then the question becomes, does this mean that there's a radicalization pipeline? And the short answer is not yet, right? Because it could be that new users are coming and commenting in both these new communities. So this would not be a pipeline. It would be that uh, these communities are also attracting the same users that are attracted to the alt-right. Uh, so um, in, in this context, we go even further and we, we pursue uh, more sophisticated analysis. Uh, the idea here is that we trace users who commented only in, uh, in a group of community in a given years, and then we see how they engage with the, the alt-right in subsequent years. We can do this for different levels of exposure, or, or for, to different extents. We can say that users who commented one to two times were lightly exposed, users who commented three to five times were mildly exposed, and users who, who commented more than five times were severely exposed. So imagine that we start with a set of users who, for example, commented only in channels of these gateway communities, the Outlight and the Intellectual Dark Web, in 2016. We can then trace these users in subsequent years and track to which extent they were exposed. Uh, here, for example, uh, one of them was exposed, uh, mildly exposed, and one of them was lightly exposed in 2017. So what happens when we look at the real data? So we can, we can, we can do different setups where the, the, the starting scenario is different. So we can track users who initially commented only in these gateway communities, in the outlight and the intellectual dark web, and compare these with users who commented only 
in, uh, initially in media channels. And what we find is that for users who commented initially in these gateway communities, uh, the exposure was much higher. So here on the x-axis, we have the years, and on the y-axis, we have the percentage of users who were exposed. The different colors represent the different levels of exposure. So for example, while for users who started in the outlight and the intellectual dark web, around 10% of them uh, were lightly exposed, and around 3% of them were mildly, mildly or severely exposed. Uh, for those who started in media channels, only around 4% of them were lightly exposed, and only around 1% of them were severely or mildly exposed. So it seems that the pipeline happens in the sense that users that comment on these gateway communities are more likely to comment on the alt-right. Lastly, we can ask an auxiliary question, which is how expressive is this pipeline? In other words, which percentage of the users who are in the alt-right went through this pipeline? And here, what we find is that the difference here is even more significant. So if we get, for example, this plot shows the percentage of users who, are, who commented in the, the outright for all levels of exposure. And for the different years, we can track what percentage of the, the, these users went through the pipeline. So, uh, and then we can compare this for users who started on the, the outright intellectual dark web case and against the media case. And what we find is that in 2018, for example, while only around 5% of the users who went through the media to, to, to outright pipeline, around 40% of the users went from the outright to intellectual dark web, the gateway communities to the outright. So this is important because it seems not only that users who commented in these gateway communities are more likely to be exposed to outright content, but also that users that are commenting in the outright went through these gateway communities. This is also significant. All in all, and I invite you all to read the paper to, to check for more details, we, we find evidence that there is a radicalization pipeline on YouTube, uh, but it's very important to stress that uh, we do not find strong evidence on why this pipeline exists. So a lot of the, the media coverage uh, related to YouTube, for instance, attributes that this pipeline, the cause of this pipeline is the recommender system. But this is a strong causal claim to make. And while our findings tell us that there is indeed this migration from these gateway communities to these more extreme communities, uh, it's not so simple as to say that this is the cause or that is the cause. Uh, there's no time to discuss that here. And I invite you to read the paper. Thank you very much.